All right, so in this fly tying instructional video, we're going to take a look at the zebra midge, which is imitating a midge pupa. Uh, this is easily one of the more popular and widely used midge pupa patterns. Uh, few materials, easy to tie, it's a very durable fly, and it's an effective fly. Uh, so to tie this, we are using a size 16 scud hook, uh, which is a little larger than we normally tie our midge pupa patterns, uh, but you can see it's got the large gap, short shank length, uh, but it has a wide gap, which is good for small flies, and then also the straight eye design, again, because we don't want to cover up any more of that gap than we have to. Uh, we're using a size 564th nickel bead. Um, you want to go down a size once you get into smaller hook ranges. Uh, to the 1 16th inch. We're using uni thread, uh, ADOT black, and then some ultra wire, in this case uh, small silver. And again, move down in hook size, you're going to want to uh, probably go down to the extra small ultra wire size. So let's start our tying thread. And then we're going to tie in our silver wire. And I like to tie in from uh, the bead down to a little bit past the bend. Uh, and this just gives us a good uh, even base to tie on. And also when I tie these patterns, I go down about a third of the way, come back up, go down another third, tie back up, and then the last third, tie back up. And the reason I do this, I think it gives it the fly a little better tapering uh, that imitates the natural pupa a little better. Now obviously if it's the not before and you're wanting to crank out quite a few of these you don't have to do that uh, but it doesn't take a whole lot of extra time and I don't know it makes a lot of difference to the fish but it looks better to me. Once we get the thread back up to the bead. We're going to start doing our wire wraps. Uh, so we just want nice even wraps. And uh, I usually look to get you know somewhere between six or seven wraps. Uh, the natural body's really segmented and also that number kind of tells me I'm on the right track in terms of the size of wire I'm using. I don't want a lot of bulk. So we're going to tie this down and then helicopter the wire off. You can build up a little more around the head if you like. Then whip finish it and if you want you can add a little head cement uh, for some added durability. But yeah, I mean, that's all there is to a zebra mitch. Really easy to tie. You can crank a lot of them out quickly. And, you know, just by changing the thread color, uh, you can match whatever naturals in the water you're fishing. Uh, so let's do uh, another one real quick. Um, and you know, a lot of people see these flies and they think that, you know, they're fishing uh, near the bottom of the river. And it's not really true. I mean, I think what these imitate, they're most effective if you're fishing, you know, mid to upper level of the uh, water column. Uh, but they can fish anywhere. You know, you can get them, you know, where the trout are feeding um, using a strike indicator or you know, some split shot if you do want to get it down. And this is also this is also a really basic pattern. I mean, you can easily change this into a good early stage emerger pattern. You know, just adding some CDC Antron, whatever you want, right at the uh, right behind the bead. I'll tie this in, and a lot of people like to add a little flash as well, uh, some crystal flash coming off the back or you know right up there around the thorax behind the bead. Wrap the 
this down. But yeah, a lot of people dismiss the midge. I mean, it's not as, I guess, prolific in terms of popularity, you know, compared to a big sulfur hatch or, you know, anything like that, caddis. Uh, but it's really important to have some midge patterns uh, in your arsenal, uh, just because they are always in the river. And there are a lot of studies out, you know, looking at trout dot and huge percentages of just about any river they looked at when they looked at the stomach contents midges were there I mean so they're they're feeding on them constantly and like I said they've been a lifesaver on several trips where it uh, didn't seem like anything was happening there's always something eating on midges But uh, I think one of the biggest tips for fishing midges is lotter tippet. I mean, you know, 7, 8, 9x tippet uh, with these small midges. Uh, especially when the fishing seems tough. That always comes through. A wet finish. There you go, the zebra midge. Uh, like I said, one of the most popular midge pupa patterns. Uh, we've got another pupa pattern that we're going to look at in another video. Um, so check that out, and then we'll have a couple other for some other stages of the midge life cycle.